Aloha, my name is Carrie Ann Sasaki, and I am here today with Matthew Chow from the State Procurement Office. We are here today to present to you 2 CFR 200, Requirements for Federal Grants, which includes FEMA reimbursement. This training covers 2 CFR 200, which is General Regulations for All Federal Grants. Therefore, the SPO recommends to conduct your procurement to align with these federal requirements. It is also very important to check for federal agency supplementals, if any. Things covered in training. We will go over the Governor's Emergency Proclamation for Hawaii, procurement rules for state and non-state entities, cost and price analysis, and available tools and resources. This will also include sole source under emergency and exigency situations, additional requirements, and use of any uh, pre-existing contracts. We will highlight some of the information from, from the FEMA training, but also include information that relates more to the state of Hawaii and its counties. The Governor's Emergency Proclamation for Hawaii. On March 4, 2020, Governor David Ige signed the Emergency Proclamation for the State of Hawaii to be effective immediately to support ongoing state and county responses to the COVID-19 disease outbreak. Governor, Governor Ige went on to issue supplemental proclamations to suspend certain laws to mandate self-quarantine for all persons entering the state and for all persons traveling between any of the islands, to effectuate social distancing measures throughout the state and to add enhanced social distancing requirements such as face coverings through the emergency relief period. Funding and reimbursement. The governor's proclamation does not require you to follow Chapter 103D Procurement Code. However, if the 103D Procurement Code is not followed, it will not be eligible for FEMA reimbursement. Now, what does this mean for an agency in an emergency? There may be circumstances for you to make the decision. Is there an urgent situation for you to respond to threat of life, public health, welfare, or safety? During a declared emergency, you will be responding to needs and there may be situations where you are saving lives with your own budget. Some things are simply not reimbursable. Right now, the world is under a COVID-19 pandemic. A glimpse of what my office, the State Procurement Office, is going through is that some agencies and departments do not go through HIEMA's process, which is to place a request for assistance or RFA into Hyema system called WebUC causes us to fight for the scarce supplies within the state. We are battling for the same supplies among ourselves, the 49 states, FEMA, and many other countries around the world, such as China and Europe. Supply simply cannot keep up with demand at this moment. According to HRS 127A 16, this is Hyema's chapter. During a declared, uh, during a presidential disaster declaration, the governor would only be able to use $15 million. How the money gets appropriated and dispersed and any further funding and information can be answered by HIEMA. The bottom line is this, there is no blank checkbook. Not everything you submit into HIEMA's web you'll see will be taken from the state's pot of money. Some items will need to be fronted and funded by your agency or department. If it does not go into WebULC and there are no HIEMA approvals, FEMA reimbursement may be lost. It is very important to follow HIEMA's instructions so that your files can be packaged together for HIEMA to submit to FEMA for reimbursement. You may receive partial reimbursement for your total costs. There are requirements for state entities and non-state entities when procuring services and supplies with federal funding. 
The federal procurement standards are found at 2 CFR 200.317 to 326, and they apply to contracts under the Public Assistance Program associated with disasters declared on or after December 26, 2014. Failure to follow federal contracting requirements when procuring and selecting contractors puts applicants at risk of not receiving full reimbursement for associated costs. Rules that apply to states. As you have seen in the previous slide, there are multiple chapters of 2 CFR from 317 to 326. So let me save you a bunch of time here and say that if you are a state and procuring as a state, you have a much easier process. You just need to follow the state procurement code as stated in 2 CFR 317, 2 CFR 322 for recycled materials, and 2 CFR 326 for contract provisions. Now, what happens if you already have a contract in place? Well, the question you need to consider is, can you use it and still receive some kind of reimbursement? Do you have the FEMA terms and conditions? If no, will the vendor agree to amending your contract to add it? Otherwise, you will need to resolicit your contract. Now, as a state and you are planning to allow the county to use the state contract, or in other words, you are doing a cooperative contract, this will require you to add the county requirements, which are the more stringent rules from 2 CFR 200.318 to 326. Another resource at your disposal can be found at the bottom of this screen that links to SPO's website for FEMA reimbursement. SPO's administrator spent numerous hours to simplify and organize a massive amount of information. So to access this resource, you can simply go to spo.hawaii.gov. It will take you to the SPO website. This is SPO's main website. And to access this, this very first um, link here, if it happens to switch to another one, just click on the first one. And you're going to click on read more. Click FEMA reimbursement. And it will take you to all the information that we have regarding any type of FEMA reimbursement. So as you can see here, um, there's a lot of information that has been uh, simplified. Thanks to SPO's administrator, she's the one that spent a lot of time organizing this as a PowerPoint, the 2 CFR 200 state special provisions, memorandum for records for price and cost analysis. And these items here, and it's numbered one that goes all the way through 14, are things that we will be referencing in the FEMA reimbursement training. As indicated here, you are required to have certain provisions for your procurement. These are from Appendix 2 to Part 200, Contract Provisions for Non-Federal Entity Contract Under Federal Grants. Please also read the Provisions Template on the FEMA website, which has valuable information. For example, the Equal Op Employment Opportunity Provision would only apply to construction contracts and not necessarily goods such as hand sanitizer. Let me give you another tip and shortcut on what to do here. The URL at the bottom of the slide is a gold mine of information. That will take you to the FEMA reimbursement page on the SPO website. You will want to include number three, state special provisions, and include the AG008 terms and conditions. Search for AG008 on the SPO website by clicking on Forms and look for the Department of the Attorney General Forms. Rules that apply to non-state entities. What are non-state entities? 
Non-state entities are local governments such as counties, institutions of higher education, hospitals, and other private nonprofit organizations. The standards are at 2 CFR 200.318 to 326 only addresses a small portion of rules that can possibly apply to a non-state procurement. If the federal rules do not address a concept, the non-state entity should seek guidance from their own rules. If, however, there is a difference between the entity's rules and the federal standards, the most restrictive of the two standards applies. These are federal procurement standards that apply to the non-state entity's procurement policies, solicitation phase, and contract award phase. The rules found at 2 CFR 200.318 to 326 are broken down as the following. General procurement standards, competition, procurement methods, social economic contracting, recovered materials, contract cost and price, review of procurement bonding requirements, and contract provisions. So just keep in mind you need these provisions and, as Carrie suggested in the previous slide, to include the FEMA terms and conditions. In addition, please note that a White House memo dated March 19, 2020, which waives some requirements such as 2 CFR 200.319B, regarding geographic preferences and 2 CFR 200.321 regarding contracting small and minority businesses, women's business enterprises, and labor surplus area firms. The link at the bottom of this slide is to locate the memo and check FEMA and the White House websites for future waivers and requirements. Please note that non-state entities or counties will probably have to re-procure everything and cannot use existing contracts because they have all these additional rules to follow. When you do your procurement, exactly like the title on this slide states, you need to have full and open competition. This prevents favoritism, fraud, waste, and abuse. State of Hawaii methods of procurement. State entities must follow the procurement code regarding methods of procurement. There are small purchase, competitive sealed bidding, and competitive sealed proposals. Market research needs to be done for independent estimates to determine what is the cost for your goods, services, or construction in the marketplace. Keep in mind that non-state applicants must comply with one of the five methods of procurement set forth at 2 CFR 200.320, which include micro purchase procedures, small purchase procedures, sealed bidding, competitive proposals, and non-competitive proposals. For 103D, the state of Hawaii only allows up to 100,000 for goods and services, and $250,000 for construction for small purchases. Whereas the federal government has a much higher price ceiling at $250,000 for small purchases. The federal micro purchase is currently at $10,000 and the state of Hawaii is $2,500. According to the procurement circular 2012-04, Instructions for Small Purchase Procurement, HAR 3-122, Subchapter 8, and 103D 310C, vendors need to be compliant under Hawaii laws for any purchases $2,500 and greater. Please be aware that a minimum of three quotes are required for $5,000 and above. For 103F, the state of Hawaii small purchases threshold is up to $25,000. To summarize, state and counties will follow Hawaii methods of procurement because Hawaii has lower thresholds. 
vetting vendors. First thing to do is check for the vendor in Hawaii Compliance Express, HCE. This will show that the vendor is compliant with Hawaii laws. Also, check SAM.gov to be sure the vendor is not debarred or suspended with the federal government. We will show you more about this later in the training. Place HCE certificate and SAM.gov documentation in your FEMA reimbursement package. If vendor is not compliant in HCE, there are other ways to vet the vendor. Please refer to Procurement Circular Number 2020-11, Contractor Responsibility Guidance During COVID-19 Crisis, and Form SPO-080, Memorandum for Record, Contractor Responsibility. Basically, Form SPO-080 was created to provide a checklist of sites to determine vendor responsibility. It is identified as number 14 on the SPO website under FEMA reimbursement. This form is also located on SPO's forms page. SPO recommends for the departments to include form SPO-080 and the HCE certification in your FEMA reimbursement package. Sole source procurement under emergency and exigency. There will be situations that demand either immediate aid or action. In an emergency, you will need to alleviate a threat to life, public health or safety, or improve property. Whereas in exigency, there is a need to avoid, prevent, or alleviate serious harm or injury, financial or otherwise. If using sole source due to emergency or exigency, you must justify with documentation, use only during the period of actual exigent or emergency circumstances, and then transition to a competitive method as soon as the period ends. I want to point out that you may not need to do this form if there is competition. As a reminder, a vendor responding back to your solicitation as no bid does not count as a quote. So what happens when you find yourself in an emergency or exigency type of situation? Like I mentioned, more documentation. Documentation to show that it is for the period of actual emergency, whether immediate action or to avoid harm. I'll give you another shortcut, so to speak. Please go to the website for the template and fact sheet. Please look for number 13, FEMA Exigency Emergency Form, and number 12, Fact Sheet Procurement During EE Circumstances. A strategy you could use is to also conduct normal and easy procurements, if you can as this will diversify the portfolio and help you justify the emergency exigency with FEMA. Sole source under ENE for COVID-19. If competition is determined inadequate, this emergency and exigency sole source exception may be used. The solicitation must have complied with all procurement standards and still only received a single offer or bid single responsive offer or bid or no responsive bids or proposal caused by conditions outside of the non-state entity's control. You must document justification for why there is inadequate competition and why the non-competitive procurement was used without canceling the solicitation and resoliciting offers or bids. Evaluating whether the solicitation was sufficiently publicized and speaking with solicited firms to determine why they did not submit offers or bids may be required to ensure the initial solicitation was not overly restrictive. If the award moves forward in light of any restrictive specifications, then documentation should be provided for why the restrictive specification or delivery requirement was necessary and could not be modified so as to enable additional competition. Put this information on the ENE form as mentioned on the previous slide. Procurement under ENE for COVID-19. Here is a picture of the FEMA fact sheet that can be found on the SPO website for FEMA reimbursement. 
see link on the bottom of the slide. As indicated here, non-state entities must follow and include this information in your procurement file for emergency or exigency. It must be during the period of an actual emergency, include justification, price and cost analysis, and bonding re requirements if applicable. If sole source under the e, &E exception, non-state entities must include required contract clauses. Under 2 CFR 200.326, all contracts must contain the applicable provisions described in Appendix 2 to Part 200. Follow the time and materials, or TNM, contract requirements if applicable. Try to avoid TNM if at all possible. These contracts have no deliverable and can go on for years, increasing the cost. A cost plus percentage of cost, or CPPC, contract is prohibited, and we will explain this within a few slides. You must also award to responsible contractors, follow documentation, oversight, and conflict of interest requirements. This is the same fact sheet Matt mentioned in the previous slide. It also contains information for state entities for procurement under emergency and exigency for COVID-19. It is also located on the FEMA website. States must follow their procurement policies and procedures, follow recovered materials requirements, and include required contract clauses. Rules by contract type, time and materials. For your information, a time and materials or TNM contract sums up the actual cost of materials and direct labor hours charged at fixed hourly rates. This is inclusive of wage, general and admin expenses and profit. Non-state entities may use a TNM contract if no other contract is suitable and the contract includes a ceiling price that the contractor exceeds at its own risk. As a reminder, it is best to avoid this type of contract. Cost plus a percentage of cost contracts are prohibited. A cost plus a percentage of cost or CPPC contract is a cost reimbursement contract containing some element to pay a percentage of future costs that are undetermined at the time the contract is made. A CPPC contract must not be used. These contracts have no incentive for a contractor to control costs. Contractor can increase its profit by increasing costs of performance. Cost and price analysis is to determine if the price is fair and reasonable. You must complete a price analysis because the feds hate price gouging, and we must show them that what we paid is not overly priced compared to the current market. Should your non-competed procurement be over $100,000, you should have a more detailed price analysis. SPO has training video for price and cost analysis. Please take a look at SPO 183 price procurement pricing and SPO 184 cost analysis on the SPO website. Or the shortcut to find these on the SPO website is listed at the bottom of this slide. If, if you are still in need of help, you may contact SPO if you are unsure. We are here to help you. Do not limit access to FEMA. They must be allowed to audit your records. must award only to responsible contractors. As indicated on the slide, you must only award to responsible contractors that are not debarred or suspended. Check by using SAM.gov and document this, which is to save to PDF. Feds don't want you to award to federally debarred businesses. Put this in your procurement file. You must award only to responsible contractors. This slide shows what it may look like on your screen after you have searched on SAM.gov.
However, you may also see a blank screen when you search for the vendor. You must save as a PDF of no records found. A blank screen means the feds have not done business with this company or entity. Let's show you a demo on how to do a quick search on SAM.gov. So what you're going to do in your URL is go to SAM.gov, which will take you to the SAM.gov website. You're going to click on the search records. And in the quick search, we're going to search for three different vendors, which will show three different results. The first vendor that I'm going to look up is Xerox. And click on search. As Carrie has pointed out from the previous slide is that it will show it has no active exclusions. So what you would want to do here is click save PDF. I will show you the PDF in a short bit but I would like to download the other two vendors so I can show you one time. So I'm gonna clear my search again. The second vendor that I'm going to look up is Clean Republic of Hawaii. And then as you can see, it has no records found. So as Carrie has pointed out, I need to save this result save the PDF. So I'm going to click on save PDF. The last vendor that I'm going to show is EKNO, oh, e sorry, EKNO Supply. And when I hit search, you'll see here it has an active exclusion. And what I'm going to do is save PDF. And now I'm going to switch my screen here to show you my whole computer screen so I can show you the three different PDFs. So just a second. And Carrie, can you let me know when you're able to see my screen? Okay, now I can see it. Okay. So the first result that we searched for was Xerox. And what I like about this is that it's real quick and easy to do because it's the quick search. And it shows what you search under, which is Xerox. And it shows you the results. The second one that we have done was Clean Republic of Hawaii. And as, I, as you can see here, again, it shows what you searched and no results found. So you would want to save this and keep this in your procurement file. The last one that we did was Ethno Supply. And as you can see here, it has a um, exclusion, which says yes. So you do not want to do business with them. Now I'm going to switch my screen back. So give me a few seconds while I do this here. And Carrie, can you let me know when it shows the screen again, please? Okay, now it's good. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is still in the quick search, but I just want to show you when you hit the view details, it gives more details about the exclusion. And this is also good just for you to look at and review if you're ever curious. Other basic rules of engagement. There are mandatory standards to adhere to. Please refer to 2 CFR 200, which includes requirements such as contract oversight, which is you must maintain oversight to ensure that contractors perform in accordance with the terms, conditions, and special specifications of their contracts or purchase orders. Necessity, you must have procedures to avoid acquisition or unnecessary or duplicative supplies or services. Standards of contact, conduct, 
you must maintain written standards of conduct covering conflicts of interest and governing the actions of employees engaged in the selection, award, and administration of contracts. Conflict of interest, um, no employee, officer, or agent may participate in the solicitation, award, or administration of a contract supported by a federal award if he or she has a real or apparent conflict of interest. Gifts, the officers, employees, and agents of the non-federal entity must neither solicit nor accept gratuities, favors, or anything else of monetary value from contractors or subcontractors. Awards to responsible contractors, um, must you must award contracts only to responsible contractors possessing the ability to perform successfully under the terms and conditions of a proposed procurement. Records, you must maintain records sufficient to detail the history of the procurement, which must include, but are not limited to, rationale for the method of procurement, selection of contract type, contractor selection or rejection, and the basis for the contract price. And the last one, or I'm sorry, two more, uh, settlement of issues. Uh, you must alone be responsible in accordance with good administrative practice and sound business judgment for the settlement of all contractual issues and administrative issues arising out of procurements and encourage standards are using federal excess and surplus property, value engineering contracts and intergovernmental agreements. Records, document, document, document. According to Hawaii law, procurement files for goods and services are retained for a minimum of six years and construction for a minimum of 10 years. It is important to have sufficient records and proof with the documentation why we can get FEMA reimbursement. This includes the contract log and memo for records, MFRs for price and for award. You need to explain all the steps that you took that took place in your procurement and that the price was fair and reasonable. SPO recommends that you use all MFRs. Auditors will like this type of documentation and this may increase your chance for reimbursement. MFRs and other templates can be found on the URL listed on the bottom of this slide. That will take you to the FEMA reimbursement page on the SPO website. What else to include in your documents? You want to include procurement circulars in your procurement file to inform the feds that you are still following the rules according to the guidance, if applicable. The feds will not know there is any change in the rules if you do not show these circulars. Currently, there is a procurement circular 2020-09 that shows HOPA, or Head of Purchasing Entity, can approve sole source exemptions, emergency and contract extensions up to certain thresholds without going to the Chief Procurement Officer for approval. This will help FEMA auditors to know why it was approved by your HOPA. This procurement circular 2020-09 allows the HOPA to approve sole source and procurement exemptions up to $100,000 with a maximum contract term of 12 months. Emergency, um, which is any amount, no limit, but only for the period of the immediate emergency. And contract extensions, which is any amount, no limit, but only for a period of 180 days. Please check the SPL website for any future notifications and information. If there is any other rules or guidance you will want to include in your, in your procurement file. Check out the FEMA website. It includes the top 10 procurement under grant mistakes that can lead to loss of FEMA public assistance funding. Let's go over it, but just as a reminder, the more stringent rules would apply. So this means that if your state rules are stricter than the federal rules, you will follow the state rules. Number one, restricting full and open competition. 
So for example, placing unreasonable requirements on firms, requiring unnecessary experience, or specifying only a brand name product um, and giving an advantage to local for firms. Okay, number two, not performing a detailed price and cost analysis for procurements above uh, 100,000. It's going to be 100,000 because of the state rules. Number three, engaging in a sole source, or in other words, non-competitive procurement, without carefully documenting how the situation has created an urgent need to perform the work sooner than a competitive procurement process would allow. Okay, number four, continuing work under a sole source contract after the urgent need has ended instead of transitioning to a competitively procured contract. Number five, not making and documenting efforts to take all affirmative steps to solicit small businesses, minority businesses, and women's business enterprises. Note for this, for number five here, this does not apply because it is waived at this point. Please check the FEMA and White House websites for future updates regarding requir requirements and waivers. Okay, number six, awarding a time and materials contract without a ceiling price and without documenting why no other contract type is suitable. Number seven, not including the required contract clauses. Okay, number eight, awarding a cost plus percentage of cost or percentage of construction cost contract. Number nine, awarding a contract to contractors that were suspend, suspended or debarred. And number 10, not properly documenting all steps of a procurement to maintain a record sufficient to answer questions that could arise months or years later. Here is a list of documents that we are compiling for our FEMA reimbursement packages. There are nine sections. It includes, but is not limited to a contract log, FEMA checklist, purchase request form, email correspondence, memos for records for price and award. We also have our contractor information, which includes HCE compliance and PDF from SAM.gov to show that the vendor is not debarred or suspended. We must also complete the emergency and exigency form if applicable for sole source justification. Then we add in the purchase order and any other documentation to the procurement file. For example, we can add in a W-9 for the vendor, additional MFRs or memo for records, and any procurement circulars or guidance. Here are some resources that may be helpful. Review 2 CFR 200.1. 317 to 326 online and check out the FEMA PDAT website. Also check SAM.gov to see whether your supplier is debarred or suspended. Just as a reminder, don't forget about MFRs or memo for records and documentation. If there are any procurement circulars affecting the procurement code, it is very important for you to include this in your file. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we hope you enjoyed this training and hope this has helped you. If you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to the State Procurement Office. We are here to help you. Thank you very much. Thank you.